Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to call to order the Northern Nevada Water Planning Commission, and I would like to announce that the that the current chairperson is absent today because of something else that came up, and so I, as the current vice chairperson, person uh, will uh, start the meeting. Um, I have a roll call, please. Um, Daniel Henderson, Michael DiMartini, here. Bill Hauk, here. Michael Drinkwater, here. John Enlow, John Flansburg, here. Mickey Hazelwood, here. John Martini, Darren Price, here. Dave Solero, here. Mervyn Wright, here. John Zimmerman, here. Harry Fonstock, Thomas Payette, Mylan Nugayan, Cindy Turchek, Ron Penrose, we have a quorum. Thank you. Okay, our first item on the agenda is the public comments, which are limited to three minutes time period per person. Um, at this time, I see no public comment card, and it looks like there's no public comment, no person wishing to speak. The next item will be approval of the agenda. Motion to approve by Darren Price, Commissioner Price and uh, uh, seconded by John Flansburg. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. I forgot to vote, but so I was voting for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, the n next item is selection of chair man and vice chairman for the term of April 2018 to April 2019 and possible direction to staff. Do we have any ideas on this? I don't, yes, Mr. Pl Commissioner Plansburg. So I would recommend that uh, we select as chair Michael D. Martini, and uh, would also recommend for vice chair uh, Mervyn Wright if he would so accept that assignment. Okay. That is my motion. Second. Okay, there's a motion to select uh, Michael Martini as chair and Commissioner Wright as vice chair. And uh, that was seconded by uh, Commissioner Drinkwater. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to just thank the previous chairperson, uh, Chair Commissioner uh, Henderson. I believe she attended each and every meeting that this commission has had in the last year under her term, and we greatly appreciate that. And. Uh, so we thank her very much. So the next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from March 7th, 2018 for possible action. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Uh, motion to approve by Commissioner Flansburg and uh, the second by uh, Hazelwood. Hazelwood. Commissioner Hazelwood. I just got some new glasses, so I'm having Difficulty seeing out to the side right now, but until those get in focus on the side. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, the next item we have is a report on the 2017 2018 cloud seeding operations and proposed operations for the upcoming water year. Uh, Mr. Frank uh, McDonough, McDonough. McDonough, Desert McDonough. Research Institute is here to give us that report. 
Uh, Mr. Thank Chair, you. real quickly, just uh, uh, make a quick introduction here that, as you recall, when we did the uh, cloud seeding program this year, the way we funded it, we did a partial funding uh, of the cloud seeding, the overall cloud seeding pro program. We did fund it in our full amount of 100,000, but there were no other funding uh, mechanisms that went into that. So <clears throat> Mr. McDonough had provided us with a proposal to do a, a a modified program this year uh, to cover two months. I think he's stretched it out to three, which I'm sure I'll explain to you today. Um, so we thought it would be a good idea uh, since the season's over for him to come give a quick presentation, one about how it went this year um, and what we can expect, and then also looking forward into next year, uh, we, do, uh, <clears throat> we do have some uh, news on that. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. McDonough. Should I drive the slides? Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks for having me today this afternoon. Um, I'm going to talk about the cloud seeding program that's been continuing over the Tahoe Basin for more than 30 years now. So first I'd like to start out just by talking about what this winter looked like. And this was a fairly interesting winter. Here we have um, the snow tell traces from four different locations within the Tahoe Basin and the Upper left, we have the Mount Rose snow tell. That's at 8,800 feet on the northeast side of the lake. And here we have the, the blue line is the, this winter snow tell trace, and the red line is the 30-year median snow tell trace. And so you can see that at Mount Rose, the winter started out pretty, pretty wet with a pretty strong storm, and then we didn't really have much at all through most of December and then a little bit in January, February was pretty flat and then in March we had a pretty impressive March and the snow tail trace actually almost reached the normal for the April 1st date, which is typically the maximum SWE. If we move over to Echo Peak, which is down in the southwest corner of the lake, this is along the Sierra Crest, you can see sort of a similar type of trace, although a little bit less. And I, I have the, the y-axis, the maximum circle, because each one of these plots doesn't have the same vertical axis. But Mount Rose and Echo Peak do. You can see that pretty much after the storm in November that kicked out a fair amount of snow and had us above average. It was pretty flat through December, gradual increase through January, pretty much flat all the way until the end of February and then in March they had about 12 and almost 13 inches of snow water equivalent added to the snowpack. But you can see it's still well below average. Down at CSS, that's the Sierra Snow Lab up on Donner Summit at 6800. That's also on the Sierra Crest. You can see that one's lower. The first storms in November pretty much were mostly all rain and you can see that prior to March there was about four inches of snow water equivalent sitting up there that was probably about 80% below the median value. And then March, it cranked up pretty good and up 14 inches of snow water equivalent was added in March. And then down in Truckee, which if you look at that vertical axis, only goes up to 16, but you can see Truckee was similar, the mostly rain in the early part of the winter, any of the storms that did come through. And then in March, it almost got back to totally normal. And I just want to point out real quick that Mount Rose and Truckee are within the cloud seeding target and Echo Peak and the Sierra Snow Lab are sort of right along the Sierra Crest and they're a little bit west of our primary target and they did have less snow. So some anecdotal evidence there. And then here's just sort of a rehash of what I just said. So November, there was a couple big storms. The first one put down a bunch of snow above 8,500 feet, but it was pretty much rain below that. So we had 14 inches of snow water equivalent at Mount Rose and only 0.3 at Truckee. December was pretty dry. January was a little below normal, but we did have a few storms. February was really dry. We only had about one inch of snow water equivalent at Truckee and 1.7 snow water equivalent increase at the Mount Rose Snow Tell at 8,800. And, and half of that actually occurred in the last two days of February. So February was really dry. And then March saved us. March, we had several big storms, added 16 inches of snow water equivalent at Mount Rose and eight, at, eight inches of SWE at Truckee. So, 
So those two sites are pretty close to normal for the date. And then April, who knows what's, you guys saw the forecast, so we'll see what's gonna happen later this week. But right now that's where we stand for this winter up through the end of March. So as Chris said, um, you guys funded, or the Western Regional Water Commission funded a partial cloud seeding program. I think I was here maybe the October, November, or September sometime. We talked about doing a project and they agreed upon, so, so where we ended up was at the end of 2017, we had a bunch of, we basically suspended the project in January. The cloud seeding generators were three quarters full, so the, pr the proposed program was to use the cloud seeding solution that had already been purchased for the 2000s water year 17 project, and then to just operate the program using that cloud seeding solution for a $100,000 project. We would focus on January and February and use up the remaining solution. So that was the plan. We all agreed to that, and that became what the project was. And then in December, the Mount Rose Ski Resort actually stepped up to the plate and threw in $2,500 to the project as well. So we did get a, an additional ski resort <coughs> to break the ice, and we're hoping we can keep trying to get those guys to be part of the program as well. So here's the project target area, the, the red shaded areas where we're trying to land snow, additional snowfall. The cloud seeding generators, are three of them are along the Sierra Crest and two of them are a little bit west of the Sierra Crest. The three along the crest, they're targeting the areas a little bit east of the Sierra Crest and then the two on the west slopes goal is to land snow all along the eastern slopes of the Sierra Crest. Let me skip that one. And so I'll just go through the summary. So the project in 2018, water year 18, in October, November, we visited all the generators. We tested the equipment. We made it fully operational. The Barker Pass generators need, need to be taken in and out each year, so we installed those. We also went out, the Western Regional Water Commission also has funded an eight precipitation gauge network around the lake to actually try to validate cloud seeding. And so we also maintain those. So we visited all those sites, we serviced them and made them ready for this coming winter. In December, we began looking at the weather, not writing official forecasts or anything, but we were watching the storms and Mount Rose joined the program and we actually were able to seed a couple of events in December. In January 1st, we started the official 24-7 project. That includes 24-7 shift person on shift, writing a daily forecast discussion. We have weekly equipment tests. We do the field maintenance. As soon as the equipment's having some, any kind of an issue, we're out there right away. And then we're running cloud seeding equipment 24-7. So we did that through all of January, all of February. And then at the end of February, we were still in pretty good shape with cloud seeding solution and the long-term forecast looked pretty favorable. So we just decided at no additional cost to extend the program for another month. And we had actually worked out pretty well because we got a bunch of events. And then for the rest of the winter or the rest of the spring and the season, we will have to do the end of the season generator maintenance, pull the equipment from the field, We'll do the data analysis of the weather data, the seeding operations, the analysis of the equipment reliability, and then we'll do the final calculations of how much snow water we added. So I went through and sort of just did the initial preliminary summary using all, so we had 22 cloud seeding events between December and the end of March. We ran the generators, a total of 487 generator hours. I haven't calculated the seeding efficiency. That The seeding efficiency is validating that the winds, the temperatures, and the cloud structures, and by cloud structures, I mean the clouds contain liquid water drops below freezing that can be converted into ice crystals. So we haven't calculated that, but in years past, that's usually runs um, over 90%. So I think that the estimates are pretty robust. So we estimate that we added just under 9,000 acre feet to the watershed, and the cost for that water were 1146 an acre foot. And just some 
little notes there at the bottom, that's about 2.9 billion gallons of water. And if that all came down the river, that's about 21,000 Truckee Meadows households yearly water. And then if we added the value of the seeding solution we used, the cost for the project would have been about 16 an acre foot. Here's the Western Regional Water Commission's precipitation gauge network, and this is part of the program. We now maintain these, these we have four high resolution gener, uh, GNOR precipitation gauges, and then we have four older style precipitation gauges that Chris had us refurbish. And so they're sitting around the lake and some of them are in the cloud seeding plume, some of them aren't. And our goal is to use data from these things to try to see if the precipitation rates are increased in the cloud seeding plumes. And I'll have results from that later this summer in the final report if you wanna read that. So moving on to next year. So you may or may not have heard that in the, the state legislature actually funded a cloud seeding program for water year 19. That, that we had proposed them fund 18 and 19, but after the really humongous winter in 17, they decided they didn't wanna fund the project in 18. So they did fund, fund the project in 2019. Here's the regions that are gonna be targeted. The, Tahoe Truckee watershed, the Carson and Walker watersheds will be a small project targeting the Spring Mountain aquifers and then the Rubies and they'll probably put a generator, one generator in the Tuscarora and one in the Santa Rosa Mountains. So that's the, tar that's the proposed project for 2019. So how, what's that mean for the Tahoe Truckee pro, program? So this is the state funded portion for the Tahoe, Tahoe Truckee project. Now that should be water year 19. It's uh, just, I have a typo there. So we, we'll, we estimate that we can run a full program, but we'll only be able to do three of the generators since but we have five, five, the potential to do five. So what that'll include is purchasing all the cloud seeding solution consumables, including the silver iodide. That's the pre-season visits to fill the equipment and make all the equipment operational. We'll have to install the Barker dual generators again, since the Forest Service makes us do that every fall. We'll run operations from November 1 through at least May 15th. That includes the weather forecasting and the cloud seeding operations. That also includes full-time generator maintenance and servicing. Um, it includes the maintenance of all the eight precipitation gauges. And then it's also the project data analysis, the SWE increase estimates, the final report, end of season takedown, and pulling the generators out. And we estimate that on an average winter, the state program probably can deliver about 11,000 acre feet of SWE to the basin. So something I'm just throwing out there is that it potentially to pick up the other two cloud seeding generators. We're thinking maybe the Western Regional Water Commission might be interested in partnering with the state program. The state is interested in having local partnership. And so what we would propose is that the commission would adopt two of the cloud seeding generators. And that would pretty much include just maintaining the generator. So be the site preparation, purchasing the consumables, the funding of the service trips, the funding of the uh, satellite modem and communications costs and the takedown of the generator. And that'd be about 25K per year. And we estimate that, that those, adding those two generators to the project mm -hmm. could add more than 7,000 acre feet to the 11,000 and the cost would be about $7 per acre foot. And I guess that's all I have for today. So I'll be glad to take any questions if you have any. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good job in the presentation. Um, does anybody have any questions? Did they go? Non-action item. This is a non-action item, but I do have one question. Uh, is it? Known whether the generators uh, do they lead to more snow possibly, or than than they do rain? Do oh yeah, they help it's all the snow. Help the snowpack better than the rain. Yeah, it's all snow. So basically, 
you know, I didn't, I didn't have any sort of background info on cloud seeding. I usually do that, but I tend to don't want to be. But so basically, the way the cloud seeding works is the we're introduced. So basically, every snowflake forms on a dust particle. Those dust particles in natural clouds and polluted clouds, and I've talked about this in the past, is if, if clouds get a bunch of aerosols in them, they actually tend to have more water drops in them, and they're not as efficient at producing precipitation. But anyway, typically clouds won't start producing snow until the cloud temperatures are below minus 15 degrees C, which is 5 Fahrenheit. And so there's a temperature range between minus 5 and about or plus 5 Fahrenheit and 23 Fahrenheit, where the clouds a lot of times will have sub-freezing water drops in. And those sub-freezing water drops are really tiny. They don't fall out. They just float over the mountain range and drop down the other side and evaporate. So what cloud seeding is is to introduce dust, silver iodide dust particles that create, that freeze these water drops. And as soon as you create a freezing event, the water will then start to accumulate, freeze onto the newly formed ice crystals. So we can't do cloud seeding unless the temperatures at 10,000 feet are about 23 Fahrenheit or lower, which usually puts the snow level down at lake level or so. So we're not doing any seeding when it's raining unless the rains, like it might rain in Reno or something, but it's pretty much all snow. This is purely to add snowpack to the basin and, and eventual runoff. Yeah, well, that's good to hear because I think that's what we need is with the potential climate change, more snow is is really what we're looking for, I believe. And, yeah, and you know, and I, our dream is to land snow where it, the, the, where it lasts into the later in the year, too. So we kind of like to go out and find the locations where the contributions are later in the year. OK, uh, thank you very much sure. for the My report, pleasure. and we yeah. appreciate it. Okay, our next item is a report, or excuse me, Chris, I guess uh, you can introduce item eight. Well, I can introduce this one. This is, um, I asked uh, Commissioner Houck um, on behalf of Tumwa to come over and give us a, a report on the 2018 snowpack and from the water supply perspective. So this is something that generally he gives to the Tumwa board every year. And I thought <laughs> since we're past April 1st, I'd see if I could get him first. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, thank you for being here. <laughs> thanks for that. Well, what a, what a difference a few big uh, winter events make. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, we were uh, thinking upstream that none of the reservoirs, none of the federal reservoirs were, were going to fill. Um, after uh, the last couple weeks and the last event in particular, we're looking at a situation where all the federal reservoirs, including Lake Tahoe, are not only going to fill but spill. In fact, Lake Tahoe, as of last week, started uh, with precautionary drawdowns, just in anticipation of the runoff that's expected to come um, in, during the rest of the season. So, um, as Frank was mentioning, after you know three extremely dry months, December, January, and February, um, March came in like a lion, and uh, basically, uh, you know, brought a snowpack and uh, precip uh, uh, from near low level, near rec almost record low levels to just about average uh, for this time of year. So it's been, uh, you know, nothing short of an amazing turnaround. Uh, as it stands now, we're, we're, uh, this region is uh, not in any kind of drought anymore. Uh, we were prior to this month uh, considered abnormally dry. Um, precip amounts basically have climbed from below normal to, to just, about, just about average for this time of year. Uh, snowpack values, as uh, Mr. McDonough also mentioned, um, um, basically have um, seen quite a boost in the last month. Really, you can see um, up until about the 1st of March, we were tracking pretty close to 2015 levels, which was just about the driest uh, snowpack year on record in both the Truckee and Tahoe basins. Um, at the end of the month, um, you could you could say that uh, snowpack values in the Truckee Basin uh, just about doubled, and snowpack values in the Tahoe Basin almost tripled. The, what does it, that's the water content in the snow, the, the SWE. And um, the official uh, April 1st NRCS uh, snowpack values, uh, although um, uh, didn't quite hit average, uh, still pretty impressive from where we were uh, to begin the month. 
Uh, the official numbers will be somewhere around 80% of average in the Truckee Basin and around 75% of average in the Lake Tahoe Basin. Uh, still below normal, but um, two to three times better than where we were just a month ago. Pretty impressive. And March, I believe, was uh, the fourth wettest on record as measured at, at uh, Tahoe City in Lake Tahoe. That's in over 116 years of record keeping. So it was a pretty wet month. And it was also the wettest month as recorded at Boca Reservoir. There's a rain gauge up there. So uh, pretty, pretty impressive. And Lake Tahoe also saw a significant rise from those events in March. In fact, uh, between those three events, uh, basically Tahoe rose at just about eight-tenths of a foot, which is really significant. Um, that's close to uh, 100,000 acre feet of storage just in Lake Tahoe. So, and um, so obviously, no surprise, uh, Lake Tahoe is going to fill this year. We're only a few inches away now um, from, from being full. The water master began precautionary drawdowns uh, last week. And um, in anticipation of the event that's uh, supposed to be coming this weekend, according to the Weather Service, he, he ramped up releases again. So there's about 1,500 cubic feet per second uh, being discharged from the dam right now just to get the lake down. Um, and interestingly enough, um, this is, uh, Lake Tahoe is actually going to fill two years in a row, and that, that hasn't happened in quite some time. In fact, it's been 18 years since Lake Tahoe filled two years in a row. Uh, the last time was the 1996 through 2000, so it's been uh, quite a stretch. But yeah, we're going to fill Tahoe two years in a row. Maybe we were due statistically, but um, uh, pretty impressive. And actually, all the reservoirs on uh, the Truckee River system are not only going to fill, but uh, projected to spill uh, this spring. So, um, and, and that doesn't even uh, include the runoff that, and uh, um, runoff and direct precip that's going to occur this weekend. From uh, from what I'm understand, is a pretty significant event. So, um, up to, they're saying up to five inches or more of uh, precip is going to occur uh, in the upper elevations of the watershed. It's going to be a fast, uh, fast moving, warm, uh, high intensity storm. Uh, it's going to bring uh, significant uh, rises to the main stem of the Truckee. This is the latest projection as of this morning. Uh, the Truckee River at Reno is supposed to crest at about 8,500 8, <clears throat> CFS on Saturday night. Um, pretty high, but still uh, it's, it, it is uh, below uh, the flood threshold. And shouldn't look anything like this, what we saw last January. That was uh, 12 to 13,000 CFS range. But it could mean some flooding in uh, the UNR Farms area at, at that level. So it's something we're monitoring. It's something to keep an eye on. Um, but uh, shouldn't be a major uh, event on the main stem of the Truckee, but definitely um, uh, something notable. And they are, they are calling for uh, localized flooding in some of the smaller streams and tributaries. So um, nonetheless, uh, you know, we should be watching this. And um, um, I'll just end it with, uh, this was quite a way to end the winter of 2017, 2018, really putting an exclamation point on, uh, on the water supply outlook for the region, which, which really couldn't be better. Uh, we're, we're about as good as we can get. Lake Tahoe filling two years in a row, all reservoirs upstream, fully charged, groundwater uh, fully charged. We are in great shape. So to summarize, um, significant recovery during the month of March in terms of snowpack and precip occurred. Uh, conditions approved from near record lows to something close to average in one month. Water content in the region's snowpack doubled and, and even tripled in the Tahoe Basin in one month. Um, we capped off the official snowpack uh, building season um, below average, 75 and 80 percent respectively, but still a dramatic improvement from where we were uh, to begin the month. Streamflow runoff forecasts are also expected to be close to average. Reservoirs right now are at their maximum flood control capacity. All reservoirs in the system will fill and spill um, once again two years in a row. And that leaves us with normal Truckee River flows for the next two to three years or beyond. And so I'll say it again, our regional supply outlook just couldn't be better. With that, I'll take questions. Uh, thank you very much, Commissioner Hulk. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Yes. Just remind me, so this outlook now, Tama, you are anticipating surface water 
uh, source through the most of the summer, or I mean, I guess minimize your groundwater extraction in lieu of surface water because there's adequate uh, water resource? That's been standard practice in the past. Uh, with our current demand levels, so and, and um, the amount of extra water we're able to store in the trough, we have a little bit more flexibility on how we can use that water. So it'll be it'll be more of a more of a blend, more of a conjunctive uh, management approach this summer. We probably won't hit the groundwater wells quite as hard as we, as we normally would. Okay. More questions? Uh, this is uh, an action item. Not action. Oh, it's a non-action? Yeah, just a report. It, we're on seven. Oh, we're on seven, okay. No wonder I'm confused. Uh, thank you very much. This is a non-action item. Okay, our next item is a report on Tumwas fiscal year 2017-2018 water usage review program, discussion and possible recommendation to the Western Regional <coughs> Water Commission regarding the scope of work and funding request to the amount of $100,000 from the Regional Water Management Fund to continue the program for fiscal year 2018-2019 with possible direction to staff. Uh, Jim? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to introduce Lane Chrisman from uh, Truckee Meadows Water Authority. He's taken over the, uh, the water usage review program from, from Andy Gebhard, who's presented it to you probably since, uh, since the beginning of the Northern Nevada Water Planning Commission. So I'll have to send him a card and tell him we missed him. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, Lane has, has put together a, um, a scope of work and budget for, uh, for next year's uh, project proposal, and he's also put together a little bit of background. Um, just, just to uh, remind you, this is a program that, that actually predates the Northern Nevada Water Planning Commission. It was recommended by the Regional Water Planning Commission, who reported to the Board of County Commissioners back in 2003, and the Regional Water Management Fund has participated in the funding at, at 50 to 60 percent um, range uh, of the total costs uh, since that time. Uh, every year. So with that uh, introduction, I'd like to uh, ask Lane to, to take the mic now. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Good afternoon. For the record, Lane Chrisman, Truckee Meadows Water Authority. So uh, Tumwa's water usage review program is probably one of our most effective conservation programs. Um, it really helps customers identify leaks that they might have um, and use water more efficiently. Uh, but it's also a really effective customer service program because um, not only does it teach them to use water efficiently, but it also helps them lower their bills. Um, and we're fairly proactive. We, we engage customers. Um, if we notice a high water, high water bill, we'll actually contact them. Um, and we also push the program through various events like Earth Day and other events that um, we have. Um, so I know in the past, Andy hasn't really... Uh, bored you guys with statistics, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a resource economist, so I have no problem boring you guys with, with a bunch of stats. <laughs> so uh, in 2015, uh, we hit a, uh, a three-year high of the water usage, re uh, water usage review program. It rose about 32% uh, uh, from the previous year. That Likely that was due to the drought, and uh, we also, um, a lot of customers went from flat rate to metered, so I think that, that spurred a lot of initial um, or additional um, water usage reviews done that, that year. Um, it rose moderately in 2016, about 3%, and this past year um, it, it dropped about 6%. Um, just looking at uh, how many we've done this year compared to last year on a monthly, a monthly basis, uh, I think we're tracking about the same. So, so this, this next calendar year, 2018, we're slated to do about what we did in, 20, in 2017. Um, so I, I did some analysis of the water usage review program in 2016 and uh, of people included in the study, we actually found that there was a 9.6% decrease in water use long term. Um, a lot of times this is spurred by, by a leak, but when, when our auditors go out there, you know, they, they, they help them detect a leak, but they also um, provide them with additional water savings tips. Um, die tabs, stuff like that. So it's, it's very much an educational program as much as it is a, a water efficiency program. Um, and I've calculated um, since the inception through 2015, this uh, program's probably saved about seven, uh, 1,700 acre feet of water. And uh, we conducted a survey in 2017 
um, on this program, and 94.5% of all customers um, surveyed um, reported being satisfied or completely satisfied um, after the visit. So it's definitely a very welcomed and um, program, and people really seem to appreciate it. Um, so we're looking to continue this program and uh, just here placing a formal request for our um, for the hundred thousand dollars. I can answer any questions you guys might have. Any questions? I have one. Uh, was the seventeen hundred acre feet? Was that per year or? That's the since the inception. So total all years. All years yep. together. And that was that's probably a low estimate because. I only calculated that based on the people that were included in the study. So there was some caveats to that. They, to be included in this study, they only had to have one water usage review. They couldn't have multiple. So it was a, it was a subset of all the people that it were included in the program. Yeah, so with that, do, would that indicate that, that the, uh, with the value of water, would, would you say, or maybe you don't have this number, in, but is it cost effective per gallon? I mean, for, for the 100,000 per year, does it save that much water? Or that's maybe not a very fair question. I don't. So I mean, roughly, uh, just kind of like ballparking it, looking at it, I mean, it was roughly $883 per acre feet. So a fraction of what uh, an acre foot would go for on the open market. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, John. Commissioner Amlo, I mean. Thank you. I mean, if I could make a comment on that, I think, as Lane stated, this is a, a highly effective program in the community, and um, I think the the way our community responds to requests for conservation and efficient water use, when you look back at our historical water usage in 2000 being higher than what it is today. I mean, it speaks a lot to um, the efficiency of Tumwa's conservation program. So I don't think it's fair to put a dollar per acre foot savings on this one program because it's really a combination of all the efforts that this community does to promote efficient water usage. Yeah, I think I would agree with that, John. I think the, the, the effect is really an indirect effect across the whole community that you probably can't, there's no way to really measure it because you're, you're not looking at the whole community as the sample set, really. So I think that's a good point. Benefits, yes. And Commissioner Plansford? <clears throat> yeah, thank you. I, I mean, this is, a, this is a great program because um, one, it uh, promotes the efficient use of water. It's a customer service aspect as much as anything else. Uh, the proactive nature of going out and actually seeing where bills have spiked and saying, okay, there's something not, not normal here, maybe there's something we can check in, actually reaching out to them. Um, in, in my uh, experience with public engagement, um, if, you can, if you can reach out and, and get someone in proactive nature like that, that that's really re being responsive. And finally, the program is funded through the Regional Water Management fund, which is a portion, which is a part of a bill that the customers themselves are paying uh, into it. So to me, it just makes a lot of sense that, that we tie these and have that nexus between these two programs, very much in support of this. Yeah. And with that, I'd make a motion if there is no other yes. comments. I will. Any more questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Then uh, I would move that we uh, accept the report and that we uh, recommend funding in the amount of $100,000 uh, to continue this program for fiscal year 2018-2019. So we have a motion and a, and by uh, Commissioner Plansburg and a second by Commissioner Hawk to, it speaks for itself, I think, the motion is clear. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? A motion carries unanimously. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, our next item is the program, program manager's report. Uh, Jim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, let's see, the first page uh, financial report on the Regional Water Management Fund uh, is through period fund, or through period 10, excuse me, or, or month 10. Um, so we have two months to go as far as uh, 
revenue and expenditures for this fiscal year. Um, it looks like we're within 10% of our revenue projections with two months to go, so, so we are in good shape. I'm pretty confident that uh, that will exceed what we projected as far as revenue from the 1.5% uh, uh, surcharge on water bills, um, especially with uh, warmer months coming and people starting to turn their irrigation on. I'm pretty sure that we'll, we'll exceed our goal. <coughs> Excuse me. And then uh, expenditures are just under a million dollars to date. Um, the estimate to complete for the year is about one, almost 1 1.5 million. So that's still um, some $800,000 less than we had budgeted. And as you remember, we tried to budget so that we spend all of the money that, uh, that we bring in and, and what our cash reserves are down to our minimum. So I think we're, we're doing well in funding projects and getting the projects down the road and still staying within our means as far as cash reserves and our revenues. And so uh, if there are no questions on this side of the report, we can flip it over to um, the, uh, the status report for projects. And uh, you can see that some of the projects um, are, are shown as, uh, well, one of them at least is, is shown as 100% complete, uh, the precipitation can um, monitoring. That's the regional precipitation monitoring program. Um, some of the others, uh, we haven't gotten final billing, but we're showing that we are complete on those as well. Um, acquisition of water rights, there was a balance left over in that one, but uh, so that's the first project. Um, but we expect that, uh, that there won't be any more billings for that uh, project. Um, and then regional effluent management strategy, um, you got the final report on that last meeting, so that one will be closed out. Um, I just signed off on the final billing on that program today, so that one, that one doesn't show as complete yet. And then also the last uh, project on the list, Regional Stormwater GIS Map Phase 1. We got a final report from Dr. Smith from uh, TMRPA on that one as well. So that one will close out um, when I receive the final billing. And I don't remember if I signed off on that one today or not, but it'll be coming in soon if not. So some of these will drop off. And then projects that you have recommended to the Western Regional Water Commission in the last meeting or two will, uh, will show up in your next report once we get contracts executed. So with that, I would ask if there are any questions um, on either of the elements of the program manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Smitherman. Any questions? Seeing none, we'll go on to item 10. It's discussion regarding possible agenda items for the May 2nd, 2018 Northern Nevada, Nevada Water Planning Commission meeting and other future meetings possible direction to staff. Uh, Jim. Okay, thanks Mr. Chairman. I'll keep talking. Um, for our May 2nd meeting, uh, what we'll most likely be doing is more of what we heard today, um, uh, especially from uh, Mr. Chrisman, would be a report on ongoing projects that are uh, in need of contract renewals and, and funding for the next fiscal year. So uh, Chris and I have a short list of um, uh, programs and reports that, that we'll choose from as far as lining up from uh, um, from the, the people conducting the projects and then bring um, probably, you know, what, maybe four or five mm -hmm. um, contract uh, reports and, and requests for contract renewals at your next meeting. That will probably round out what the agenda looks like uh, next month. Okay. Uh, was there something for the DRI that we should be thinking about or is, would that be a future agenda item potentially? Regarding the cloud oh, seeding, the the cloud seeding, they typically we bring that into to you in uh, in the fall. So when at some point we'll hear another report and a request and proposal for next year, uh, will come from Mr. McDonough. Okay. Right. Yeah, and then we'll get Thank the you. final report on the on the cloud seeding program. Right. Thank you. Is there any other items uh, regarding the agenda? Seeing none, we'll go on to uh, commissioner comments. See no commissioner comments. We'll go on to. Oh, did you have one? We're a quiet group. I oh, you're a quiet yeah. group. Yes. Thank you. You do have a comment. Thank you. Uh, uh, staff comments? Um, a couple. Um, just to let you know, uh, the Western Regional Water Commission did approve the budget as you recommended um, at their last meeting. And so. Um, they still have a, one more cut at it at the budget hearing in May, but, uh, but we had a couple of questions, but nothing, uh, uh, no direction to change the budget, so I expect it to go through as you recommended it at the, at the May uh, budget hearing. 
And then also, I'm planning a trip out of town uh, April 9th through the 20th. So if you need something from us, um, feel free to get a hold of Chris or, uh, or Jennifer, and then I should be back um, by the, the, the Monday following the 20th, and, uh, and, and that's a week in advance of our May meeting, so I should be here in plenty of time to get things, um, you know, my responsibilities done uh, prior to our next meeting. So just to let you know, I'll be absent for a couple weeks. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Smitherman. Uh, just one other thing. I just wanted to oh. say thank you to Commissioner uh, Drinkwater for uh, giving us a tour of the Tumworth plants uh, for uh, bring, your, bring your child to, to work day. And Jen brought her daughter, and, and we had a great tour. And it, was, it was very informative. Um, and as I commented before, I thought this plant looked like it was in great shape for being as old as it was uh, claimed to be. So. <clears throat> anyway, thank you for that. Uh, thank you. So, uh, okay, we have, we're going on to staff comments now, or excuse me, public comment. And we have a comment card from Ms. Ginger Pierce. Uh, we're limited to three minutes. I guess she wants to speak. I was going to have you ask her if you want. She wanted me to read it into the record, but we'll let her talk. Okay. She was already headed up there. Good afternoon. I don't <clears throat> talk very much. I just listen a lot. I have a question. Whatever happened to the Mount Rose treatment plant? Not there. I went out, oh, every once in a while and took all kinds of pictures, keeping a record of what was going on and how the bridge went and when they got the gravel road in and when it was black topped. And I went out today and there's nothing there. Whatever happened to that plant? And that was my question. Thank you. I, legal counsel has a comment. Um, oh. we, we don't normally, um, as a commission, respond to or answer questions that are posed during public comment, but I think this is a significant enough item of public interest and education that if any commissioner knows the answer, they might put it on the record. Commissioner Enlow. So the, the road construction and the bridge construction that you saw had nothing to do with the water treatment plant. That was related to the um, Monte Vista phase 2B development, the 23 lots that were constructed, but um, Tumwa plans to go out to bid on the construction of that project here within about a month, so. Okay, thank okay. you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Enlow. Okay, now I see no other public comments, and so now we will look for a motion for adjournment. We have a motion for Mr. Hawk and seconded by John Flansburg. We are adjourned. <laughs>